So when we understand the distribution and habitat of the pangolin, so it is primarily found in forests, grasslands and agricultural areas in India, Nepal and India, Nepal, Bangladesh and Sri Lanka. So it has a wide range of habitats including tropical rainforest, dry deciduous forest. <music>
and they are listed on the categories respective categories the categories are uh, least concern means this means uh, the species particular species is not that much threatened so no problem for the species so that is uh, depicted through the category least concern next is near threatened so that is uh, it is the furthermore sub means in future there may be a threat to the existence of the particular species next is the threatened categories three kinds of categories are put in the threatened category so those are vulnerable endangered and critically endangered so there is a peculiar criteria criterion is followed uh, it is based on number total number of number of adults surviving similarly the rate of rate of death so how fast the animals the the animals are dying so similarly these kind of criteria is taken and uh, species are listed so most problematic categories are these three categories that is vulnerable endangered and critically endangered when a particular species enters these categories any of the these three categories we can understand that we can know that uh, the, sp uh, the species is facing a lot of challenges for its existing uh, existence on the earth right so there are other two categories so extinct totally extinct uh, from the earth so best example here we can see sita so it is extinct from india around uh, 90 in 90 in 1900s itself so it is one of the examples that are for the species that have extinct so another category is extinct in the wild so the species particular species is extinct in the wild but it is available or surviving surviving in captivity right so these are the categories that are uh, done by iucn so as we go above the extinction risk increases for this category of species so try to remember this table and to try to remember the categories try to remember this case categories so these may be asked these can be asked in the examination right so this is all we should know about the iucn and its uh, red list now we will see the most important part uh, the species which have been categorized into different categories and from india we will see what are those species and in which particular list they have been put in so try to focus in this area in the past there have been many questions uh, asking about the uh, the species which are threatened or uh, vulnerable and uh, focus was on the habitat of that species the <coughs> habitat the threats threats faced by particular species and uh, the uh, physical features physical features of that particular species and also emphasis was on the behavior of the species behavior of the species so uh, for every uh, every species i have uh, tried to provide a photograph image so try to from the image uh, try to gra grasp the physical characteristics physical features of the particular uh, species whether it is animal or bird or uh, for that matter amph amphibian etc so from the uh, image you try to grasp the physical feature the physical feature of that particular species because the emphasis was also on the physical features when it uh, when uh, it comes to the species that is uh, that is facing uh, extinction right so first species is uh, bengal tiger so it is uh, categorized as endangered in the iucn red list so bengal tiger it is a magnificent magnificent and iconic big cat a uh, species native to the indian subcontinent <laughs> so basically the uh, the bengal tiger it represent it represents strength and vitality right now we'll understand the habitation habitat and the distribution of this particular species so it primarily primarily inhabits in forests grasslands and mangrove swamps of india bangladesh nepal bhutan and myanmar we have seen the uh, sundarbans sundar sundarbans so 
these are the one of the most famous uh, host or habitat for this bengal tiger right so when we see the distribution so the bengal tiger can be spotted in various tropical rainforests dry deciduous forests and mangrove forests along along the coastal areas so just now we have seen the example uh, sundarbans also hosting this magnificent bengal tiger so status if you see we have understood that it is put in the endangered uh, category in the iucn red list so some of the threats faced by the bengal tiger are uh, habitat loss habitat loss so for any species facing extinction this will this will be the primary cause loss of habitat due to intervention of human beings and uh, forests are being destroyed by human beings for various various purposes including the developmental activities and also another important threat is climate change and uh, subsequent loss of biodiversity so these are some of the primary reasons uh, for uh, the decline or we can say the vulnerability of the particular species so first reason will be habitat loss habitat loss or destruction second threat will be like poaching third will be like uh, climate change climate change so these these will be the general and the most important threats so try to remember uh, try to remember these aspects also so when it comes to bengal tiger also the primary threats are threats are habitat loss poaching and human wildlife conflict because of various reason so human being increasingly is trying to uh, he started interfering in the forest and the wildlife so because of that human wildlife conflict is arising so humans are uh, in that uh, conflict uh, the species are losing the war similarly the Ill illegal hunting of this bengal tiger for its uh, skin bones and other body parts so because of uh, this reason also the bengal tiger facing lot of threats right second species is a ganges river do uh, river dolphin sorry one more species we have to see that is asiatic lion so basically yesterday also when we were studying the national parks and uh, wildlife sanctuaries we have studied about this uh, asiatic lion so it is the home for asiatic lion is gir wildlife sanctuary or national park national park right so it is basically placed in the endangered list of the iucn uh, list so approximately 600 species are surviving 600 uh, number of uh, asiatic lion so this is approximate figure try to find out the exact figure it is put in the endangered category category in the iucn red list right so basically it is native native to the gir forest national park and the surrounding areas in the uh, saurashtra region of gujarat right so when we understand the habitat so it is uh, inhabited inhabits the asiatic lion inhabits in deciduous forests scrublands and the grasslands right so this type of landscape or habitat is suitable for asiatic lion so basically when we see the distribution so the gir forest national park and the surrounding areas serve as the largest stronghold for asiatic lions so there was a propol a proposal earlier also i have mentioned it uh, there was a proposal that the this particular asiatic lions have to be uh, reintroduced in some other uh, national parks or wildlife sanctuaries but the authorities who are managing the uh, uh, who, who are managing the gir national park or wildlife sanctuary they are not ready to accept this proposal so threats we can understand as we all know it is put in the endangered category so basically the th threats are habitat loss human wildlife conflict poaching and uh, genetic bottlenecks are significant threats so genetic genetic bo bottlenecks means so there is no diversity the because they are confined to only particular area gir national park so they are interbreeding among themselves so there is no diversity in the uh genes genetic material so because of these uh, these these reasons 
they are falling prey to falling prey to various diseases right so try to find out the find out the about the diseases also so because of there is lack of a uh, genetic diversity because they are interbreeding among themselves for hundreds of years so they are falling prey to various kinds of diseases disease diseases are attacking them so once the disease attacks they are dying like in hundreds so once upon a time the 2 3 years back there was a at uh, disease attack so almost 200 lions have been died because of this disease attack so try to focus and remember these type of aspects right the third species is ganges river dolphin so it is also very very important uh, we can say uh, species when it comes to india so it is also categorized as endangered in the iucr red list right so basically it is renowned for its distinctive appearance and unique adaptations to riverine habitat so basically its habitat is rivers river freshwater rivers like ganges and brahmaputra so it's special it is the species is special for its uh, inhabitation of riverine habitation right so uh, it has a certain distinctive physical features so ganges dolphin is characterized by its long slender body rounded head and a distinctive elongated snout so try to remember the physical features also there is a chance that the examiner may ask about the physical features of that particular species so the threats uh, when we understand the habitat and the distribution so it is found in the freshwater rivers and the trib tributaries of the indian sub in in uh, indian subcontinent including ganges Bam brahmaputra and meghna river systems right when we see the distribution of this um, ganges it does uh, gan uh, sorry <coughs> dolphin so it inhabits deep pools of slow moving stretches of water so basically this is the uh, habitat of this particular dolphin so basically uh, uh, it is categorized as endangered in the ioc and red, uh, red list so basically the threats are habitat loss pollution and the accidental entanglement in fishing gear so uh, some other threats are fragmenting its habitat by restricting the its movement because we are building lot of bridges and the dams so these are uh, splitting or breaking the habitat of this particular dolphin so because of that they are unable to move freely so because of that they are unable to survive so try to remember these points next important species is one hand rhino so it is also in vulnerable list vulnerable category in iucn list so <clears throat> we have see uh, we have uh, studied about this we were when we were studying the khajuranga national park khajuranga national park so this is uh, the iconic species of, uh, in the khajuranga national park right so basically it comes in the mammal uh, category so the, it is called as the great one hand rhino or it is also called as Indian Rhinoceros. <laughs> so physical features, when we see the physical features, it has characterized by a massive body, thick gray skin and a single large horn, horn protruding from its snout. So you can see its single horn. So basically it is facing extinction because of the poaching. Right. So this particular uh, uh, Rhinoceros is posed for the horn one uh, horn it is there so it is believed that the uh, horn has medical uh, medicinal qualities and it is used in the traditional medicine of china etc so because of that horn that uh, belief the one horn rhino is facing lot of poaching threats and because of that reason the numbers have dwindled in the past so when we understand the habitat of this one so it inhabits in grasslands and the flat plains of in india and nepal so basically it is it is surviving in the brahmaputra 
Brahmaputra floodplain region. Right. So it is basically found in wildlife reserves, uh, national parks and wildlife reserves, including Kajanga National Park and uh, and uh, Chitwan National Park in Nepal, where efforts are underway to protect its winding, winding population. So the conservation efforts were, were successful. And uh, in the past decades, we can see an increasing number of increasing. The numbers of uh, uh, one hand rhinos are on the rise. So basically it is put in the vulnerable category in the IUCN list. So the th uh, threats are habitat loss, poaching and human wildlife conflict. So basically it's uh, due to historical hunting and poaching, its uh, numbers have been dwindled, and also because of the habitat destruction, the species is facing a lot of problems. Next one is pygmy hawk. So this is very small and interesting species. So it is put in the endangered category, sorry, critically endangered category. So it is listed as critically endangered uh, category in the IUCN red list. So try to remember this aspect. So this is one of the species which is categorized as critically endangered. So pygmy hog. So it is one of the smallest and rare, rarest wild pig species. Right. So basically it is native to the grasslands and the wetlands of the Indian subcontinent. So distinctive physical features. So it is characterized by small size reaching only about 25 to 30 centimeters in height and weighing only around 6 to 9 kilograms. Right. So when we understand the habitat, so basically it is found in the tall grasslands and the red beds of north, reed beds of northeastern India, particularly in Manas and uh, Sonai Rupai wildlife sanctuaries. So this is its habitat. So it is uh, it is comfortable area in areas where dense vegetation cover is available and access to water resources is there where it can forage for roots, tubers and small uh, invertebrates. So basically this is its uh, habitat and distribution. So conservation status, it is uh, critically endangered and uh, the threats uh, faced by it are habitat loss, degradation of environment, uh, whatever landscape on whatever landscape it is surviving so degra degradation of that particular landscape and hunting so because of all these aspects it is facing threats similarly conversion of grasslands for agriculture deforestation and the human encroachment to pose uh, i mean these all all these aspects are posing threat to the this particular species pygmy hog next one is uh, another important species, snow leopard. It is categorized as vulnerable in the IOC and red list. Right. So basically it is native to the mountainous regions of Central and South Asia. So in our country, in India, we can find, find it in the Himalayas and even in the Northeastern region of Himalayas. Right. <laughs> so it is uh, no, uh, remarkable or known for adaptations to high altitude environments. So it holds a significant place when it comes to the high altitude environments. All right. So basically when we see the characteristics, it is characterized by its thick fur coat to survive in the winter and uh, which is beautifully patterned with rosettes and spots. So this is basically uh, about the uh, physical characteristics of the uh, snow leopard. Habitat, dis habitat and distribution so it is it inhabits in rugged mountain mountainous landscapes including himalayas karakoram hindu kush and altai mountain so basically this is its habitat it is adapted to alpine meadows rocky cliffs and uh, sparse forest or at elevations so basically this works or uh, this is its uh, habitat where the species survives so when we understand the threats threats are habitat loss poaching human wildlife conflict Simi similarly it is hunted illegally for its fur and body parts and uh, retaliatory killing uh, reta retaliatory killing by headers so because of all these reasons the particular species is facing a lot of threats next one is uh, kashmir musk deer 
it is also put under the endangered category in the IUCN red list so so it is also native to the mountainous regions of south area south asia particularly the kashmir valley and surrounding uh, region so this is also very beautiful uh, and majestic species so basically when we see the characteristics so it is characterized by its compact compact build short legs and rounded ears so you here in the uh, picture you can see the rounded ears of this particular species right so it is habitated in the uh, dense forest rocky slopes and alpine meadows in the himalayan and karakoram mountain ranges so basically when there is dense vegetation so it is very much suitable to this particular species right so basically so musk production so basically the uh, male musk deer male kashmir musk deer produce a musk secretion known as musk which is highly valued in traditional medicine and a perfume so in perfumes so because of this reason also the species is uh, threatened or uh, poached and uh, the existence of the species is threatened so as a result the species has been heavily targeted by poachers leading to significant decline in the populations so it is classified as endangered in the iucn red list right so now we will see uh, dhol it is uh, uh, classified as endangered in the iucn red list it is also known as asiatic wild dog or indian wild dog so try to remember the alternate names also the examiner may ask with different names in the examination so you should be in a position to uh, recognize the particular uh, animal or species so basically dhol it is also known as asiatic wild dog or indian wild dog so it is highly social and adaptable carnivore native to forest and grasslands of asia right so it is a uh, distinct uh, with its distinctive uh, distinctive appearance and a complex social structure it plays a crucial role in maintaining a balance in ecosystem so basically it is known for hunting various other species and in this way it tries or it plays an important role in the balance of the ecosystem all right so when we understand the habitation so it uh, thrives well in tropical forest deciduous forest and the mountain Uh, grasslands across asia so if we understand the spread it is uh, spread across india china thailand and uh, russia where they occupy variety of ecological niches and uh, adapt to diverse environmental conditions right <coughs> right so uh, the dholes have a peculiar social behavior so these are highly social animals means they live in packs so they i mean basically these species are not known for living individually basically they live in cohesive packs consist, consisting of up to 20 individuals so with this packs they exhibit complex social hierarchies and cooperative hunting strategy so basically they try to live in groups packs packs of 20s and they try to uh, uh, kind of uh, they kind to uh, they kind of try to hunt Uh, in a group as a group so that the hunting success, success rate becomes very high so doles are skilled hunters preying on a variety of angulates small mammals and birds so this is about the peculiar social behavior of doles so it is uh, uh, classified as endangered in the iucn red list the threats faced by it are habitat loss fragmentation of its habitation and Uh, persecution by humans so humans are ha humans have started persecuting uh, persecuting it so because of that reason also the numbers of doles have been on the decline similarly it has to compete with other predat predators such as tigers leopards and uh, so because of this reason there is a threat for its existence right right another important and a peculiar species is indian uh, pangolin so it is also classified as endangered in iucn red list so 
so it is a unique and elusive mammal species so it is uh, native to indian subcontinent so it is very peculiar and specific because the its uh, surface body surface is covered with scales and not uh, fur or skin so because of this uh, scales it um, it gives uh, the scales give it's a uh, it a peculiar um, we can say characteristic so it is the animal pangolin basically poached increasingly poached for for the scales so it is also believed that these uh, um, the scales have a uh, peculiar i mean important medicinal properties and uh, the scales are used in the traditional medicines of china and vietnam so because of this reason also these uh, uh, pangolins are being poached increasingly right <coughs> so it is uh, the uh, species is characterized by its tough overlapping scales which cover most of its body and provide protection against the predators right it has a long slender snout and uh, uh prehensile tail which uses it for climbing and balance balancing its arboreal habitat right so when we understand the distribution and habitat of the pangolin so it is primarily found in forests grasslands and agricultural areas in india nepal and india nepal bangladesh and sri lanka so it has a wide range of habitats including tropical rainforest dry deciduous forest and human modified landscapes right so when it comes to behavior and diet it is a very shy animal so indian pangolin is a nocturnal and solitary solitary means it uh, uh, likes to live uh, singly indi i mean individually so nocturnal means it uh, i mean it uh, comes out and looks for its food in the night time night time right so that's why it is called as nocturnal and a solitary animal spending much of its time foraging for ants termites and other insects so basically this is its uh, food so food provided by ants termites and other insects right so it also has powerful claws to dig into ant and term termite nets and feed upon them right so it is basically uh, categorized as endangered by iuc and red list the threats are habitat loss fragment habitat fragmentation and poaching for its scales and meat so why we have understood that it is believed that the scales have a medicinal uh, importance medicinal characteristic characteristics in the uh, traditional medic medicinal ways of china and vietnam right similarly uh, until now we have discussed about mammals now we will see about birds we will see some of the birds which are categorized as uh, endangered or uh, which, which are vulnerable right first one is great indian bustard it is critically endangered so try to remember this aspect so it is critically endangered when we see the physical characteristics it is characterized by large size standing at around 1 meter tall with wingspan of up to 2.5 meter so it is a very big bird right right so it is primarily found in the arid and semi arid grasslands of india and pakistan so try to remember that remember this point is it it is now confined to the arid and semi arid uh, regions of india and pakistan only so it inhabits in open plains desert scrublands and agricultural fields where it forages for seeds insects and small vertebrates so basically it is uh, categorized as critically endangered the threats faced by it are habitat loss habitat loss habitat degradation and also hunting so other threats faced by it are conversion of uh, grasslands into agriculture lands infrastructure development and distribution or disturbance by human activities it poses a significant threat to the survival of the great indian bustard right another uh, species is another bird uh, Beng bengal florica so it is also uh, categorized as critically endangered <coughs> right 
so habitat and dis uh, distribution when we understand so it is inhabited in grasslands and uh, wetlands of the indian subcontinent and uh, southeast asia so it inhabits in open grasslands marshes and the flood plains where it forages on insects seeds and small invertebrates another one is jordan scurter cursor so it is also critically endangered in iucn red uh, iucn red list so it is endemic to the scrub forest of andhra pradesh and telangana states in south india so it is especially endemic to andhra pradesh and the telangana states in the south india region right so it is uh, found in dry open scrub habitats with spa, uh, sparse vegetation such as thorny scrub forests and grasslands so basically it frag uh, it occurs in fragmented populations in the states of andhra pradesh and telangana where it faces threats from habitat loss degradation and a human disturbance so there is a belief in uh, i mean both the telugu states that uh, on the day of dashera so this bird has to be spotted uh, people there believe that it is auspicious to spot that bird uh, on the day of dashera so because of that poachers are increasingly capturing these birds and uh, and uh, putting them in cages so because of this reason also the birds are on the number of these birds is on the declining trend next one is sociable lapwing it is put under critically endangered category right so these are uh, these uh, birds thrive well in uh, arid steppes and uh, semi deserts of central asia including country, countries such as kazakhstan russia and mongolia right right so during the non breeding seasons it undertakes remarkable migra migrations traveling thousands of miles to, to wintering grounds in the middle east north africa and south asia so it, the bird is also known for migration migration for thousands of kilometers to the south pole during the winters right next bird is forret owlet so it is also uh, listed as endangered in the iucn li iucn list so it is found in the dense deciduous forest and bam bamboo forest particularly in the satpura and maikal ranges of central india so it is also known as the world's rarest owl right so basically it is classified as endangered in the iucn red list so threats faced by it are habitat loss degradation and fragmentation of the habitat next species species is siberian crane so it is also critically endangered so it is uh, uh, in the 15 uh, crane uh, 15 crane uh, uh, subspecies it is the only subspecies which is categorized as critically endangered so when we uh, during the breeding season siberian crane inhabits remote wetlands tundra and taiga habitations in the northern russia so the bird is also known for migration so the siberian crane undertakes one of the largest migrations of any crane species covering up thousands of miles annually between its breeding and wintering grounds so basically during the winter season to survive severe winters in the siberia cold desert it will come to india and it spends its winter in the indian subcontinent so it is also the bird is also classified as critically endangered so basically the threats are habitat loss degradation and hunting along its migratory routes and wintering ground so basically these are the threats faced by this particular bird next one is uh, spoon billed piper so sand piper it is also critically endangered right so it is uh, i mean the spoon shaped bill and uh, it is distinct for its spoon shaped bill and captivating behavior it has captured the attention of bird watchers and conservation conservatives also so this is also very very important bird so it is actually known for its small and spoon shaped uh, we can we can say uh, it is known for its small size and a spoon kind of shape right <coughs> habitation so it breeds in the arctic tundra of north northeastern russia where it nests in the shallow depressions on the ground right so threats faced by it are basically it is classified as critically endangered 
in the IUCN list due to habitat loss, degradation and hunting along its migration routes. Right. Next we will see some reptiles. Uh, first one is Gharial. So it is also critically endangered in the IUCN red list. Right. So it is renowned for its long slender snout. So here you can say it is uh, famous for its uh, or peculiarly known for its snout and a distinctive appearance. So it is a gharial is a unique and I iconic inhabitant of the uh, the cent basically it is found in central India. So in the uh, rivers of the central India and uh, it is uh, thrives well in freshwater inhabitations. So when we understand the <coughs> distinctive physical features we have seen it has a long narrow snout uh, which sets it apart from the other crocodilian species. Right. So when we see the habitat, so it is found in the fresh rivers and the tributaries of the Indian subcontinent, especially in the central India, including Ganges, Brahmaputra and Indus Valley River, Indus River systems. Right. So it is critically endangered by IUC, uh, listed as the critically endangered in IUCL list. Basically, the threats are habitat loss, pollution, and accidental entanglement in fishing gear. Right. Next one is uh, Indian roofed turtle. It is listed as vulnerable in the IUC and red list. Right. So it is basically, uh, it is also known as Indian tent turtle, distinguished by its unique appearance and habitat uh, preferences. Right. So it is uh, basically inhabited in fresh waters and it is known as the Indian tent turtle, right. So basically they uh, inhabit in slow moving rivers, streams and ponds in the Indian subcontinent. So they are commonly found in areas where dense vegetation and uh, submerged aquatic conditions are there where they can find ample food and shelter. Next one is leatherback sea turtle. It is put under the critically endangered category in ISUN list. <coughs> So it uh, nests on the beaches of India, right? So basically it has very important ecological importance, ecological role as the predator on jellyfish. Right. So key aspect of the leatherbacks uh, diet is jellyfish. So basically it consumes jellyfish. So the specialized jaws and the throats structures allow them to consume large quantities of these uh, creature jellyfish playing a crucial role in maintaining the, maintaining the balance in the uh, marine ecosystems. As you all know, jellyfish are, are not considered when they grow large in number. They occupy the space of normal fish. So basically jellyfish are not uh, considered uh, good for the, uh, good from the ecology point of view, environment point of view. When they grow large in number, they occupy the space of the normal fish species. So by consuming the jellyfish, the <coughs> this particular turtle, leatherback sea turtle, it pl plays an important role in the uh, balancing the ecology, right? So basically, it is facing a lot of threats from human activities. Uh, the threats are habitat loss, pollution, and accidental capture in fishing gear. These all these pose a significant risk to the populations of this particular turtle. Right. Next, we, we will see some amphibians. So first one is Malabar frog. So it is put in the category of least concern. So at this point, it is not facing that much threat. Right. So not facing that much threat. So that means it has uh, numbers are not dwindling that fast and the numbers are at satisfactory level. Numbers are at satisfactory level. Right. So it is endemic to the Western Ghats of India. So as you all know, Western Ghats, one of the important hotspots of biodiversity. It is well known for the Western Ghats are well known for various frog species or amphibian species. So this particular uh, amphibian Malabar frog, frog is also endemic to the Western Ghats of India, right? So distinctive appearance. It is uh, it's uh, one of the most uh, striking features of Malabar, Malabar frog is its uh, vibrant colorization. Here you can see 
rich green color and it is also known for intricate patterns on the frog all right so conservation challenges so <coughs> they face uh, face threats from habitat destruction and pollution all right so western guards home to the species are under increasing pressure due to human activities emphasizing the need need, need for conservation so the habitat in the western guards that is facing lot of uh, threats due to uh, the various developmental activities developmental activities especially the infrastructure projects infrastructure projects so this particular aspect is threatening the particular species right so these are the some of some of the species i thought which i thought were important for the, from the point of view of examination you also from your side try to find out information about the, about some of the other uh, species which are uh, that are put under the iucn red list right now we will see some questions uh, first question it is asked in 2023 just uh, recent just recently recently concluded exam right the question is consider the following fauna the options are uh, the fauna are lion tailed macaw malabar civet and the sambar deer so the question is how many of the above generally nocturnal are most active after sunset so nocturnal behavior means basically they forage uh, for the food during the night times so right though we have not discussed about these species so these are also basically uh, in uh, news due to the uh, i mean the threats faced by them including the loss of uh, their uh, habitat so basically here the malabar civet it is also especially uh, specially found in the uh, the western ghats region and the south indian region so this is known for its uh, nocturnal behavior other two this uh, lion tailed macaw and the sambar deer they they forage for food the or they are active during the daytime itself so basically the answer is malabar civet so answer is malabar civet so it uh, active during the night time so because of this reason i asked you to focus on the physical features and also the behavior patterns of the particular species so try to have an idea try to have some information about the behavior of the species also next question it is asked in 2013 question is in which of the following states is a lion tailed macaw found in its natural habitat so the options are tamil nadu kerala and Kar karnataka and andhra pradesh so basically question is about the natural habitat of, of the lion tailed macaw so answer is uh, tamil nadu kerala and karnataka so basically it is naturally found in these three states not in andhra pradesh right so the uh, correct option is option a 1 2 and 3 so basically you have to know about the habitat of a particular species also next question it is asked in 2012 the question is which of the following groups of animals belong to the category of endangered species so it is a tricky question you have to there are there are a group of uh, i mean species are given animals are given you have to find out uh, which group of animals are belonging to the endangered category right so the groups are great indian bustard musk deer red panda and asiatic uh, wild ass next group is kashmir kashmir stag cheetal blue bull and the great indian bustard great indian bustard we have studied it is critically endangered this this much you know we know right snow leopard it is also we have seen it is endangered uh, right vulnerable it is in the vulnerable category swamp deer rhesus monkey and the sarus crane right we have seen cranes also they are facing a threats of uh, we can say extinction or they are in the troubled category next one is lion tailed macaw blue bull hanuman langur and cheetal so basically uh, there is a concept called vermins so basically when when you uh, study about the wildlife protection act there are five schedules Uh, there are five to six schedules so under fifth schedule there are some vermin some animals some species are put under the vermin category 
वार्मिन कैटेगरी सो ये पर्टिकुलर स्टेट गवर्नमेंट फॉर द स्पीसीज एनिमल स्पीसीज विच आर किप्ट अंडर द वर्मिन कैटेगरी द पर्टिकुलर स्टेट गवर्नमेंट कैन अलो पीपल टू हंट पर्टिकुलर एनिमल if it is felt that they are destroying the crops etc or uh, creating lot of disturbance for the people so particularly some categories like monkeys uh, nilgai and even in some areas the bats till now they have not uh, been put in but th these are some examples so these kinds of uh, species or animals can be uh, allowed uh, sometimes can be allowed uh, for hunting because they if they i mean if they keep on damaging the crops or disturbing the uh, humans a lot so they can be allowed there is a permission a state government has the right to allow hunting of this particular animal so basically the blue bull nil gai <laughs> it is there and the rhesus monkey in these group of options so blue bull nil gai rhesus monkey so it is also under the fifth schedule and also here blue bull is uh, blue bull is mentioned so when we know this point you can basically eliminate these three options so the remaining option is option a so through this uh, uh, i mean elimination process you can find out the correct answer so correct option is option a so by looking at the species also you can you come to know that so basically these are the species yes the four particular species are facing uh, existence challenges they are belong to category of endangered species right great indian bustards we have studied it musk deer red panda and asiatic wild ass so other in other three species there is a there is an animal which comes under the vermi category so through that option you can eliminate these three options right that's it uh, for today uh, thank you thank you for joining the class see you next time until then bye have a good day